So we have the following limit. We have the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the positive direction of x plus 2 all over x plus 3. So I notice that this is a one side limit due to this plus sign symbol, but do not freak out. When it comes to evaluating one side limits, we evaluate them like normal limits. So what we're going to do is plug in the value that x is approaching, which is negative 3, into our function. And when we do that, that will give us negative 3 plus 2 all over negative 3 plus 3. And negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, and negative 3 plus 3 is 0. And negative 1 over 0 is undefined because anytime we have a non-zero number over 0, that indicates it's an undefined value. Now typically when we get an undefined value for our limit, we would say it's DNE. But in this case, it's a little different because this is actually a one-sided limit. So let me explain why that is. Let's say that this limit was approaching just negative 3. Well, in this case, if we were to plug in negative 3 into our function, we would get negative 1 over 0. And in that case, since it's just approaching negative 3, we would then say it's DNE because typically when we get an undefined value, that indicates that the limit from both the negative direction and positive direction is different. And remember, in order for the limit to exist, the limit from both the positive and negative direction must be approaching the same value. And when it's undefined, that typically means they're not approaching the same value. So when it comes to evaluating it just at negative 3, it would be DNE. But since this is a one-sided limit, well, that rule doesn't matter because it's just one-sided. So in that case, the limit is going to exist. So that is why we're not going to put DNE for that which means we have to figure out what the value is. Now, luckily for us, when it comes to undefined values, the limit is either going to be one of two things. It's either going to be infinity or negative infinity. The tricky part is figuring out which one it is. So I have a trick to figure it out. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a table and we're going to select X values where X is approaching negative three from the positive direction. Now, if you're kind of confused what that means, let's visualize it. So if we had negative 3 on a number line, anything that's approaching negative 3 from the positive direction is going to be anything to the right of negative 3. So you can think of it this way. Negative 2.5 would be something approaching negative 3 from the positive direction. And then getting closer, you could do negative 2.9, negative 2.99, etc. So when it comes to our table of values, some x values that we can select would be negative 2.5, negative 2.9, negative 2.99, and negative 2.999. Essentially what we want to do is we want to plug these x values into our function, and we want to see what's happening to f of x as we get closer to negative 3 from the positive direction. And when we do that, um, when we're at negative 2.5, you see that f of x is negative 1, but when we jump all the way down to negative 2.999, we see that f of x is negative 999. So as you see, as we get closer and closer to negative 3 from the positive direction, f of x is getting smaller and smaller, which indicates that the limit in this case is going to be negative infinity. So therefore, the answer is going to be negative infinity. And there you have it.